Because about 30 years ago when Jamaat went from South Africa to most likely a country called Gambia. Recently when I went home, my brother told me that Jamaat came to Heidelberg. So the man giving Kar Guzari, he was in that Jamaat. He said they reached this place, most likely it was Gambia, everyone is Muslim. So they went to give dawah to a certain man. They gave, gave, gave. One man became irritated with them. He said, just leave me alone, I go to the masjid. He said, if you want to waste someone's time, go to Big Papa. And he just walked away. So this man was very amazed with that name, Big Papa. Like, what's this Big Papa? So he asked somebody else coming past that, can I meet Big Papa? So that man already got scared. And he just walked like he never heard the question. So he came back to the masjid, it was troubling in Salat time, so they made a jamaat. We have met many people, but there's this Big Papa. One man said, go meet Big Papa. So the jamaat is a jamaat, what they understand, the politics of the land. So the jamaat was made, people of South Africa, go meet Big Papa. So they go out, they're looking for a taxi. Every taxi they're asking, Big Papa, the taxi drives away. So Big Papa was big someone. Finally, it's a long story, how much they paid the man. He said, I'll park at the bottom of the road, you'll have to walk up, that's his place. They land at the place, there's security outside. For that security to wonder, Big Papa was a big trader in drugs. Now to see this Jamaat with Kurta and Turban coming, that looked a little bit odd. In today's time, no longer it's odd. Nowadays, people with Kurta also go and buy it. But in that time, it was odd. So he asked, what's your one? He said, Big Papa. So that man laughed also. What do you want to do with Big Papa? And as they're standing there and they're making dua, it just happened that secretary of Big Papa had to be driving in. So they had to open up. So he looked at them, he also got a shock. They're all Muslim. He asked, what y'all want? He said, we want to meet Big Papa. So he can't understand that y'all came to meet, maybe to buy drugs. So he said, for what? He said, just to meet Big Papa. So the more ambiguous they are, the more bigger it's sounding. So finally he went in and something happened. And then he said to the guards, he let them in. So when they came in, they had to follow protocol. They were told to sit in a lounge. And they were told, Big Papa will give you all 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you stand and you go. That man said when Big Papa walked in, first a group of about 20 walked, all with arms. And then Big Papa wasn't called Big, he was huge. They said it was a huge man with rings and chains all over and tattoos on his body. And he came and... Mm. He said he had glasses black, so I could not even see his eye. And when he put his hand and he said, so the secretary said, Ta talking. That poor mutakallim on that day, I don't know what he said. <laughs> Ten minutes the secretary said, talk. And Big Papa, he said, I never knew if Big Papa is hearing me or not hearing. He just said. But this is that verse of Quran that Allah knows who got something inside. And we will open up such roads for dhakir. So you just carry on telling other people. Who knows who will take advice. Big Papa stood, sat. He never spoke one word and then mutakallim said, I also never knew what I said. Ten minutes finished. He said, Big Papa spoke. And he only said, what do you want? He gave the bayan already. He said, what do you want? So the Mbuwa Mutakallim never know what to say now. He gave the bayan. So he just said, you'll come with us masjid. And the man behind said, what? That Mutakallim went. And he said, Big Papa just turned to that man and said, he said that man went in perspiration. Because Big Papa meant death. You play, you don't play my game, you're gone. And many had gone on his hands. He just looked at the man, looked at the man. That man must be shivering, the other must be shivering. He just looked, looked, looked. And then he said, let's go. He said, when he stood up, so the man of khidmat now, he trying to contact him that, you know what? Big Papa is coming. So what he knows, Big Papa is coming. He said, go get something. So he went to the shop to buy snacks. A crisp. Even man is coming, so he's laying on Dastar Khan of crisp, and Big Papa entered the masjid. That poor Mutakallim, I think he just told the Amir Sahib, I brought him to you, yes, Big Papa. He's gone. And that Amir spoke and spoke. They said, Tell Asar Salah, they said, speaking, speaking, speaking. And then Big Papa asked the second question. He's not talking, but he's just sitting. Just before Asari asked the Amir second question, what do you want? 
It's only a word. <laughs> so the Amir said, will you read Asar with us? So he said, Big Papa pulled out his gun. He never had one gun, he had guns. But when the first gun came out, even that Amir thought he was going to shoot him. He pulled out his gun and put it on the musalla. Because he needed to make wuzu. He pulled out chains, he pulled out what and what. And he told his people, look after us. The amazing thing is, Big Papa knew how to make wuzu. And he knew how to perform salah. So he read the asr and he never moved. And he said, what do you want? So the Kalim started again. And he's giving a bayan till Maghrib. Maghrib time, Big Papa had wudu. They said in Maghrib Adhan, they heard like Big Papa's insights cry. He said, one, oh, and said the whole masjid started crying. So after Salah, Big Papa, he speaks now. They thought he can't speak, he only knew what do you want. He said, I do not think Allah can ever forgive me. So the mutakallim's old bayan starts again, our toba. He only said one word. Isha time comes. He said, what do you want? He said, would you spend the night with us? So Big Papa told his people, take this away. So some of the security said it is not safe because Big Papa had killed so many. <laughs> if they have to know he's in the masjid, he'll be killed. He said, take it away. Come tomorrow. Some of them must have stayed as God, I'm sure. <laughs> but the Jamaat said, three o'clock in the morning, he woke them up. <laughs> he said, the cheers of that man made the whole Jamaat wake up. This is that innahu ya'lamu al-jahra wa ma yakhfa. That can you bring subhanallah on your tongue? That's all your Allah is asking. Forget that I'm the boss. Just say, oh Allah, you are the boss. And you are the best after that. Sabbih isma rabbika al-a'la. Can you bring Allah's name on your tongue? So the next day, Big Papa gave his name for three days in Jamaat. Papa went out. The Jamaat from three days became 40 days. Finally, Big Papa fulfilled a four month. They said that Jamaat moved with 70 of his security. Every one of them made Toba. 70 when the Jamaat was so big, the poor Jamaat, this one got left out. So they came to meet him after about 40 days in a certain area. Big Papa said, part of my Toba is that whoever's life is in the dirt that I found myself, I will give him dawat. And I will try and pull him out, like how you pull me out. <coughs> he said, that is the purpose of my life. But in that 40 days, when this Amir came to meet him, this big papa said, I only got one more thing to ask you, will you come with me to go visit my father? He said, no problem. What he would learn after that, this big papa's father was one of the senior alims of that land. He said, it's only when he met him, he understood what an alim this is. And that son went into drugs. He said, that alim cried for this Amir. And he said, I never believed my son will come back. I knew one day a sentence will come that he killed Lord, someone shot him. Before that Amir left, Big Papa told him, I have memorized 20 Jews of Quran. Before my life changed. He said, all 20 I forgot. But in the spirit, in the path of Allah, I will not go back until I get back the Qur'an. So this man says that he wrote to them when they came back to South Africa. I memorized the whole Qur'an. Then he made it a ma'mul every day, Maghrib to Isha. He would stay in the masjid. He became a da'i for that land. And the final news they got of Big Papa is one day on a Friday after Asr before Maghrib he passed away in the